What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab, username enumeration via subtly different responses. This is fairly similar to an attack that was performed in a previous lab. The only real difference here is that the difference in response when providing an invalid username or a valid username is very subtle as opposed to obvious. We also find that the length of the response changes for each request. So we're not able to filter responses by length to determine which responses are actually different. So it is possible to perform username enumeration with this vulnerable lab. However, we also need to make use of the grep feature in Burp Intruder. We can't rely on the length of the response for the reasons we've just mentioned. Okay, so here is the lab. Let's head to the My Account section. We are going to provide a random username and password. Let's choose login. We get the response invalid username or password. Now the previous version of this lab actually told us whether it was the username or the password that was invalid. The fact that the web app is not letting us know whether it's the username or the password that's invalid is one of the ways that a web app can protect against username enumeration. However, this app is not secure because there's going to be a difference in the response. So here is the post request to the forward slash login endpoint. And we can see that the username is provided as part of the post request body. Let's insert payload markers around this. And then the next step is to copy the list of usernames that Portswigger provides for being used with these authentication labs. Let's copy that to the clipboard. Attack type is set to sniper. Let's head to payloads. We have simple list selected by default. We're going to choose the paste option under payload settings. You can see our list of usernames is now pasted into the list. Now what we'll find is that although the response is different depending on whether the username is valid, we can't use the response length because it seems to be randomized to some extent. So in order to solve this lab, we actually need to make use of another feature under the settings tab and that feature is grep extract. So let's choose the add option. We can see an example of the response for this particular post request. And the response that we get is invalid username or password. So we're going to highlight this response and choose OK. Let's then choose start attack. So we can see at the moment that the intruder attack is looping through the entire list of usernames. And we can also see that we have an extra column here in the results and it's possible to actually sort by this column as well. So let's give the attack a moment to finish and we'll come back and see what results we get. So if we sort by the data in this column, we can see a very subtle difference with one of the responses from the app. So we can see request 70 with payload Apollo doesn't actually have the full stop at the end. So it's subtly different. Now you might be wondering a little bit about what grep extract is. So we provided a very specific string, invalid username or password. So why is invalid username or password without the full stop matching? And that's because that's not really the function of grep extract. That would be the function of grep match in the intruder settings. What grep extract does is it looks for all of the data between a start and end point. And if you have a look at the page source, we can see that there is a p tag with the class is warning. Then we have all of the information inside that p tag and the endpoint is the closed p tag. So when we've highlighted invalid username or password in grep extract, what Burp Suite has done is said, okay, I'm going to return any data between the end of is warning and the beginning of the closed paragraph tag. So that's why regardless of what the data is, if it appears between the start and end point, it's going to be returned to us. This would typically be used if you wanted to, let's say extract a token from many different requests. The idea is to extract a specific piece of data from each request. In this case, we're using it for something slightly different. We're using it to figure out that actually the data that is grepped here is slightly different from all of the other requests. That's because there's a subtly different response from the app when we provide a valid username. There's a missing full stop. It's kind of crazy when you think about it that a single missing full stop allows a hacker to perform username enumeration and figure out the usernames of every user of your particular site. Now, of course, it's not that straightforward because we were obviously making use of a simplified username list and there are no other safeguards in place like request throttling, for example. But it is interesting how such a small mistake in a return response can cause a vulnerability to arise. So heading back to the intruder attack, we can now dispose of our first set of payload markers and replace it with a valid username, the username Apollo. We then can insert payload markers around the password field itself. 
Once again, we have a list of potential passwords provided by Portswigger for use with this lab. So let's copy that to the clipboard. Let's move now to payloads. We can clear our previous list of usernames. Now we're going to paste our list of passwords. And if we head to settings, we don't really need this grep extract. So we can uncheck this. Notice the difference between grep match. These settings can be used to flag result items containing specified expressions, grep extract. These settings can be used to extract useful information from responses in the attack results table. And we can see it was extracting everything from warning and the end of the open paragraph tag to the beginning of the closed paragraph tag. Okay, with everything in place, let's choose start attack. And in this case, although we can't figure out which is valid from the length, notice by the way that the length of all of these requests is slightly different. We should be able to determine a correct login from the status code. So instead of a 200 response, we expect to get a 302 response for this particular vulnerable app. Okay, so the attack is not quite complete, but we can see that one of our requests did successfully log in. We have the payload Joshua, we get a status code 302. So we now have a valid username, which is Apollo in this case, and a valid password Joshua. Let's choose login and we get the flag. Congratulations, you solved the lab. Now, in summary, this was fairly similar to an earlier lab where we were able to enumerate the usernames and then after that brute force the password for that specific username. The difference is that we were able to use response lengths to enumerate which requests were valid, whereas it's clear in this particular lab that the length of the response is somewhat randomized and we can't reliably use that to differentiate between responses. So we just have a couple of extra tricks now at our disposal to differentiate between responses when using an intruder attack. So we looked at grep extract, which is going to extract a piece of data between two bounds, start of the string and the end of the string. And the second way we were able to differentiate between requests here was also from the HTTP response. So the invalid passwords were returning a 200 response, whereas a successful login was actually getting the 302 response, which is a type of redirect. So what typically happens is the login is valid, so then the user is redirected to the account section. That's why we get a 302 response instead of a 200, because after a successful login, the user will typically be taken to a different URL. All right, hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you guys in the next lap.